You ever wanted to track something through a frame? Maybe even video. Tracker node in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. Seriously, I could make a half hour DaVinci Resolve tutorial out of just that one clip. It took me so long that, look, I'm wearing a new shirt. This is another day that I'm getting to film this portion of it, where I actually walk you through the entirety of the tracker node in DaVinci Resolve Fusion and show you how all the cool stuff works. So we're gonna dive into Resolve, and I am going to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes on that opening skit because I think it's really cool and it might whet your appetite for some upcoming tutorials on the channel. Hint, hint, subscribe now. Anyway, let's get into Resolve and take a look at what's what. Here's the opening clip. We're gonna come back to that later, I promise. But here's the clip that we wanna look at. Nothing happens at the start, but here you can see I've tracked a circle to the GoPro while I sing along at a stoplight with Billy Joel. I will not play the music here for copyright reasons, but here we have our base clip. You could tell the difference because this one has the fusion little stars icon, this one doesn't. So to start, all we wanna do is right click on our clip and select new fusion clip. Now we can right click on it, say open in fusion page, and we have our media in one, which I press the one key. It comes up in our first viewer and media out is in the second viewer. We're gonna start by adding the tracker node. So we're gonna press shift space bar, and then we're going to type in track and it's gonna bring up tracker. That's the one we want. We'll hit add. Now we need something to track. And in this case, we want a high contrast pixel and I'm gonna choose the corner of my GoPro. Now. If I zoom in, this solid line is where Resolve is going to do the tracking. It's gonna look for the high contrast pixels in here and track this throughout our clip. The dotted line is the search window. So if your object moves a lot between frames, not overall, it can, overall it can move across the whole frame no problem. But if it moves a lot from one frame to the next, you wanna make this bigger. Right now, this will work just fine. And by default, this is how your tracker is set up. What we wanna do is change our adaptive mode to best match, come into match tolerance and type in 0.4 and then press the tab key to tab away. And now it knows where to track and how far and how close it has to be. So we're gonna press this icon, track forward from current time. Notice here, we're at the first frame of our clip. If you're somewhere else, you're gonna need to do both this icon and then track reverse from current time. But this'll work for this clip. And this is a GoPro uh, Hero 10 clip, shot at 2.7K resolution, 30 frames per second. For good tracking, you generally want anything 2.7K or higher. 4K usually works better. We'll talk about that when I show you the opening skit. So we're gonna track forward, and this'll take some time depending on the speed of your computer, but you can watch along, and I'm gonna control mouse wheel to zoom out. You can watch along and make sure that Resolve is tracking your object the way it should, and it seems to be doing a good job so far. We'll just let it finish. Now, while that tracks, I just wanna mention that I picked this specific clip because A, it's GoPro footage. It's not some fancy mirrorless camera, full frame, yada, yada, whatever. It's a GoPro. A lot of people have GoPros, so you can see if you have a GoPro that it will track GoPro footage as anybody who's watched my main channel, Road Reality, has seen. Now that it's done, let's go in and take a look at it. And we can see here that it moves around quite a bit, but stays in this general area. And if I scrub through the footage, you can see that the tracking window stays with the GoPro all the way through. And when it's done, we'll take a look at it. But now we need an object to track to it, something to stick to it. You might use text, you can use a video. In this case, I wanna use this blue circle. And we're going to drag the output of the blue circle to the green triangle. And that's not actually a blue circle, it's a gray square and a media two node. But if I press the one key, you can see that it is the blue circle. Now what we need to do is make sure our tracker one is selected, come over to operation, change it from none to match move. And it didn't seem to do anything. Well, you can see that it's doing something because the blue circle moves when I scrub through the footage. But back at our first frame, we need to make sure 
media in two is selected and we're going to press the shift space bar and we need a transform node. So we're gonna type in trans F, you can type in TRA for all I think it cares, but you want this transform node, this one right here, we're gonna click add, it will add it in line. See, woo, in line. Now the transform node is there, it gives you this handy arrow deal. You can put it right there on the corner of the GoPro because that's the point that we tracked. If you put it somewhere else, it won't line up with what we have. Now, in this case, I do want it sort of centered on the GoPro, so we're gonna move it over just a touch. And with our transform one still selected, we're gonna bring the size down. You can just click and left drag with your mouse until it's about the size you want. And that's gonna look cool, yeah, oh, it tracks all the way through, yeah, that's great. But it looks kind of funny, so what we're gonna do is add a keyframe for the angle. So at the first frame of the clip, we're gonna click on our keyframe icon next to angle, and we're gonna click and drag with your left mouse button all the way to the last frame, and we're going to double click on angle and type in minus 540, which is one and a half turns. Tab to get out of that, and you can see it moved. Now we're mostly done, except I wanna show you a couple of neat things. Now that we have our tracker done, we can go into settings, and we're going to drag back to the first frame and we're gonna drag our blend all the way to zero, click keyframe. We're gonna go 40 frames ahead. We're gonna click there. Yeah, we're on frame 41, it's close enough. We're gonna drag all the way to one. You can double click and enter the numbers if you want, but in this case, it works pretty well to just click somewhere and then drag. So we're at 440, we'll click our keyframe icon, we'll drag again to the last frame and we'll drag one down to zero. So now it will fade in and rotate, and then it will fade out. The last trick is to click on motion blur here in settings. We're gonna change the quality to about eight. This will slow down the render, but once it's done, you'll see what it looks like. So we're gonna come back to our edit tab, and you can see the red line, that's our render cache. We're gonna wait, and that's going to finish the render so that we can play it back smoothly. Now that the line is fully blue, now we're gonna go full screen and we'll play it back. And you can see that it tracked just fine all the way through there, all the way through our clip. And you see how much that camera's moving? That's more than most people will track, but hey, we got it done and it looks pretty good. So that's the tracker node. Now let's go take a look at that opening skit real quick. And I'm gonna show you some of the techniques I used in there. Don't be afraid. If you're not used to fusion, it can be a little bit intimidating what you're about to see. So you have been warned but it is going to point you to some tutorials that I'm going to do here in the near future. And I wanna show a couple other caveats with the tracking tool. So let's jump back into Resolve. And here we've got our opening skit. We'll click on the clip and then right click, say open in Fusion page. And yeah, that's a lot of nodes. I mean, this thing involves drop shadows and multiple different transforms and masks, and then it's got different types of trackers. We have the planar tracker, a couple of regular trackers, and a magic mask, because I use magic mask quite a lot, and some and a merge. Not some merges, but a merge. The funny thing about this is if I zoom in to where my finger is in my hand, you would think that I'm tracking the tip of my finger here, but it didn't work. I was actually quite surprised by this, but if I click on tracker one, you see the, the path. This is my finger's path, but I'm not tracking my finger. For some reason, Resolve wouldn't track it, but it would track this high contrast area. And if I click away from tracker one, you can see that this area right here has some darker and lighter skin tones, and that's exactly where it's tracking. So it's tracking basically the crook of my thumb and middle finger here, and it tracks that. So you'll notice if I come back to this frame, my finger is further right than the logo, but when we come back here, it's centered. So you can tell that it's tracking on that. So basically I did the best I could. Probably if I messed around with it, I could have gotten it a little bit better, but it's pretty good. So hopefully now you understand the tracker node in DaVinci Resolve's Fusion page. And if it doesn't seem to be working for you, try, try again. It's been a lot of trial and error for me over the years to get certain things to track right, and sometimes you have to muck with the settings a little bit to get it just right to where it will track the thing you're trying to track. 
but cars, street signs, usually fingers, but almost always a GoPro I can get to track. So, hey, if you like this video, boop the like button. If you wanna see how to stabilize with the tracker, click on this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's probably gonna be something related to this. Bye.